Jane Castor of Tampa, Mayor Ken Welch of St. Petersburg, and Mayor Frank Hibbard of Clearwater. They discussed planning and preparation for Hurricane Ian. Uh, the administration, the administrator is going to give a little bit more of, the, of our conversation uh, in just a moment. The president underscored his commitment to the people of Florida and made clear that impacted communities will have the full support of the federal government to augment state and local emergency response efforts and emphasize the, the importance of encouraging families to heed evacuation orders. There will be a full readout of the calls later today in just a moment, but again, the administrator will actually share a little bit of that readout in a moment. FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell was in Miami yesterday as well to assess the ongoing preparations and we appreciate her taking the time to be here with us today, provide all of you an update on what those efforts look like and the latest on the storm. With that, FEMA Administrator, would you thank you? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you just heard, I did join the president in his uh, conversation with the three mayors uh, in Florida. And what he spoke about with them was making sure that he understood what the, um, their needs were and he wanted to hear from them on what their potential impacts were going to be. He asked about their um, progress with the mandatory evacuation orders that are in place. And he really wanted to make sure that the mayors knew that he has committed the full force of the federal family to make sure that we are there to support them and what they need and that they can reach out to me, we can reach out to him anytime with any needs that they may have in the aftermath of this storm. So a little bit about the storm. As of this morning, the National Hurricane Center upgraded Hurricane Ian to a Category 3 storm, which means that's about 125 mile an hour winds. Ian is moving toward western Florida at approximately 12 miles per hour. And at this time, we are expecting landfall somewhere between Fort Myers and Tampa. By the time it reaches the shores of Florida, the storm is going to slow down to approximately five miles per hour. And this is significant because what this means is that Floridians are going to experience the impacts from this storm for a very long time. I can tell you that our biggest concern as we uh, wait for this storm to make landfall is storm surge. And I will note that storm surge is a leading cause of hurricane related fatalities. Just in 2018, when Hurricane Michael impacted the Florida Panhandle, there were five reported fatalities as a result of storm surge. So therefore, if people are told to evacuate by their local officials, please listen to them. The decision you choose to make may mean the difference between life and death. You won't just see storm surge, though, on the western coast of Florida. Hurricane Ian's path is also going to bring some storm surge to the eastern coast somewhere near the Daytona to the Jacksonville area. In addition to the storm surge, we are also going to see significant rainfall with the possibility of up to 25 inches in some isolated parts of Florida. And as always, there's always a possibility for tornadoes. So the main message I have for everyone in Florida is that this is going to impact everyone in different ways. So you need to stay focused. I did speak with Governor DeSantis on Friday to hear his main concerns and his priorities for the response and the preparedness actions. And we immediately began